Naked neck Transylvanian chickens. Now, I don't really see, I don't really see the attraction for things. You're mad. She loves it. You've got a naked neck. You've got a bird. You can see its crop and its chest. I just, I just don't get it. But what, what is it you like about them? They're so quirky. It's just, I mean, they're a proper breed. They are, they are properly bred chicken. Yeah. They're, they're designed for hot climates mainly. And it was about. They're a good utility bird because they're good laying, but they're also really good meat birds. They're really? incredibly easy. <laughs> yes, they're incredible. Not the bantam size, yeah. sadly, but they're incredibly easy to pluck because it's not just the naked feathering. It's really it's sparse feathering as well. Yeah, you are. So they're a Mediterranean breed that were really well developed for the climate. What's also nice though, in, up north, is they're still a hardy breed because the feathering doesn't seem to have any impact or lack of on sort of um, you know colder climates. Yeah. But what I love about them, particularly the bantams, is their personality. They are just so forward and cheeky, and they, they're actually like dogs more than chickens. Yeah, are they? They follow really you around the, the garden, yeah. incredibly friendly. Yeah. Um, well, instead of chickens, they'd rather stay with each other. These will actually actively follow us. So, what are you up to? What are you doing? Hello. I mean, she's not running away from me. None of them are running away from me. No. They're coming to the front. Hello, you. See, I'd run away from you. <laughs> <laughs> they're just beautiful. They've got such nice, and I love that black leg. I love it. Yeah. They, they've just got nice, it's nice tight feathering, beautiful colour legs. You, for the males, you're looking for a really deep, deep red. There's a male down here. There he is. Look at him. Just look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, it's that deep red. <laughs> no, no, it's a statement of fact, Claire. <laughs> They're just fascinating birds. Yeah. And the colouring is great. I mean, it's um they tend to be blacks in the bantams. I've had some of the cuckoos as well, which they've got. I've never managed to find the red in the bus, but I have some blues, because the blues the blue show up as a sport, the black sort of when you're green black. Blue before. I've had blues and they're just beautiful. They're like funny aracanas in a way. Yeah. But they're just they're more than just a, a chicken to look at. They're a conversation piece, they're friendly, they're pets. They're just beautiful. If hardly ever get them showing up on Championship Row, it's lovely. Yeah, it's nice to see, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's really That's good quite to see. A, I must admit that one is quite a sweet one. I don't like them, but uh, the cuckoos are the cuckoos are quite sweet. So you've just won first in class for this, yeah? Yeah, we have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's a Colombian pekin. That's yeah. Right, yeah. And what's how old is this bird? This bird's a pullet, it's just under a year old. She's around nine months old. What are the good points about this bird? It's the cleanness from the back here and taking it all the way around to the tail. You don't want any smuttiness, which is leakage of the black. Yeah. You can kind of see a little bit of underfluff in here. Stuff, yeah. But that is, that's okay and standard that you have that. I've got pecans and they're incredibly broody. They always go broody. I use them for sitting on, on eggs because they, they just love to brood and love to hatch, yeah, don't they? Do, they? Yeah. And it's all this fluff. I, I mean, I maintain that the fluffier a bird, the more likely they are to brood. And yeah, really keep, them, keep the eggs nice and warm. Yeah, yeah, they do, don't they? Yeah. in order to let the chick hatch. So if it's a nice broad top, yeah. the chick can turn around at a vital time and put its head up near the air. Yeah, yeah. Set. So you don't want pointed eggs. Yeah. And you don't want them long and thin. Long and thin. Yeah. And then the shell has got to survive three weeks with a hen sitting on it. So it's got to be nice and strong. Not porous. Not porous. Yeah. That one's got a few wrinkles, which is not so good. Oh yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. And then they're going to be fresh because if you're going to hatch, you need to be fresh. But those are well summers. Yeah. Those are Morans. Yeah. And the ones, the greeny ones, are Arucanas. I mean, there's a lot of maintenance 
maintenance and keeping those looking nice. It's, uh, it's very difficult. You have to keep them indoors. You have to keep them on deep litter like straw or, or shavings. They can't really go outdoors. They're not allowed to get muddy or kick around in the garden at all. with Belgian bantams and the first one is the clean-legged Barbu d'Anvers meaning bearded from Antwerp and they have clean legs and a rose cone. Uh, this is a blue quail, that's the colour. You can see it's blue and then the normal quail would be black instead of the blue there but the other colours exactly the same. This is the female her legs up, her feet up, like a hackney horse. Yeah, like a trotting pony, yes, isn't she? Yeah. Yes, The second breed of Belgian Bantam is the Barbu Duc, meaning bearded from Ook, which is a suburb of Brussels now, but was once a village. And they were made um, early 1900s. Um, it's full of foot feather, uh, as well as the whiskers, and it has vulture hocks. In other words, stiff feathers from the hock joint. And this is what we call a tricolour, um, because there are three colours on the majority of the feathers. Third breed, though, is this is the barb of the Vatemar, it from Watermail, which is a suburb of Brussels now. And the end of the comb is divided into three little points. Um, it's a broad rose comb ending in the three points, as you can see on that bird. He's my favorite.